Well, I, look, as humans, we're not ready to be second-class citizens. And if you look at the history of how humans treat second-class citizens, as in our animals, it's, it's not pretty. And also, you might say, well, in the beginning, the, the machines leave us alone, but in a long enough timeline of 200,000 years, are you gonna trust the fact that every microsecond they'll continue to decide to keep us around or not make a mistake? Probably not. So I'm just not putting on my Terran hat here, but I'm saying the Terrans have a pretty good argument that if you want the species to survive, you probably wanna to try to stop this. At the same point, it's unstoppable and the human condition is to climb the mountain. It's the Oppenheimer, I'm gonna build the bomb even though it can destroy us. And if you get into scientists, let alone AI scientists, that probably goes up a factor of 10 that, that they wanna solve the problem. And so these are, you know, immovable uh, object, unstoppable force. And so I have to agree with your assertion of the future. Bitter rivals or bitter dichotomy of the same human animal coming together and being forced to decide. And I think it's gonna get very ugly. And uh, yep. I appreciate your thoughts on it, Professor. Um, right. What are your final so thoughts for, for people here as far as, yeah, what are your final thoughts here? What do you want people to think about? What should they do if this uh, conversation has piqued their interest or moved them? What should they do? Well, it, in the last chapter or so of my book, I, you know, I tried to answer this question. You know, is, is there a way where both parties are satisfied? And, and one idea I had was um, put a bunch of brilliant cosmists into a rocket and they leave the Earth at extremely high speeds and they just build their artifacts elsewhere and so humanity survives. But then there's a counter-argument to that and that is, well, if they build the artifacts and the artifacts wipe out the cosmos in, in the rocket, and then because they're artifacts, they could return to the Earth because the Earth is a wonderful receptacle of raw materials and atoms and whatnot, right? And so the, the Terrans, Terran politicians on the Earth wouldn't even tolerate that. And so, you know, the, 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 these cosmos escape in a rocket. So I, I don't see any obvious way out. I've been trying for years to, to find a solution where both parties are satisfied. And I think it's, you know, if, if I had to bet, I'd say probably a war is likely. Now, if the Terrans win the first time, well, I think it'll just be a repeat. You know, sooner or later, the, the cosmos arguments are so powerful, then there'll be a, a, a resurgence of cosmos thinking, and then, then there'll be another war. And maybe again the Terrans went. Would you just keep cycling through until eventually the, the cosmos do win, and then humanity perhaps is uh, kept in zoos, or we get wiped out totally, or and then the artifacts move off in, you know, into a whole new phase of evolution. They go out there, do their thing, discover other hyper intelligent creatures who are billions of years older than them, and and so on. So, uh, you know, for the for the past year or uh, decade or so, I've been not thinking about this too much because it's it's so horrible. Um, I don't know if you're interested, but so what I, what have I been doing for the last decade or so? Uh, largely two things. One is when I was uh, in China the first year, I, I was traveling a lot in trains. And I must have seen about half of the provinces of the country. A province is like a state in the US. And I stare out at all these villages, one after the other after other. It just meant there are a million villages in China, a million. So that's why Mao Zedong said Ch uh, Japan would never conquer China because uh, Japan had two million soldiers in China. That's two soldiers per village. I'm sure the villages could take care of them. So, um, but I remember seeing these uh, peasants on their water buffalo in, in the paddy fields and feeling utterly depressed, thinking, what a waste. And then they're just you know, subsistence farmers growing their rice to stay alive. And yet 1% of them are you know, really brilliant. If they'd had a decent education, they, you know, they, they could get PhDs 
build up to the next <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, so one of, one of the things um, I do now is I try to provide masters and PhD level education, in pure math and math physics and computing, for free. So I, I just, I, you probably saw the whiteboard behind me, see the whiteboard behind me. Yeah. So I just write up the lectures on it, film it, send it off to YouTube and so on. Um, so that people, students around the world can teach themselves for free. Because nearly everyone, nearly the whole planet nowadays has, has a smartphone, you know, a cell phone, uh, a mobile. So they can use that to educate themselves. And the other thing, I don't know if you're interested or not, but is um, I'm very interested in gender politics. So I, I write mas- that's men's lip, masculist, masculism, sort of like feminism, but for men. So I write theory for that, and that 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 preoccupies me so that I don't have to think too much about these cosmic Terran horrors, because it is, it's horrible. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link, and I hope you enjoy The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money, despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. 
a banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.